we are going to ask for full membership for the Palestinian state. Israel wants peace with the Palestinian state, but the Palestinians want, want a state without peace. I think the day after Palestine will be admitted to the UN, Israel knows that it cannot get away with it. It will be held accountable. But no matter what happens or doesn't happen at the UN, uh, the next day is not going to result in the kind of changes that the United States wishes to see. This is Our World is Communications. My name is Mark Gonzalez coming to you from my home in San Antonio, Texas. Home. For many years now, the Israelis and the Palestinians have fought each other over a land they both call home. While the Israelis have Israel, the Palestinians continue their struggle for their own independent state. Palestinian statehood will be the subject of today's topic, the news media, an analysis of news framing on coverage of Palestinian statehood. The news media are a powerful communications force that is oftentimes on the receiving end of criticism for not being objective. The agenda-setting theory by Maxwell McCombs and Donald Shaw make this criticism especially relevant. The power of the news media to, in effect, set the public agenda make it an important public institution where public trust is at its core. It is this trust that is at the heart of efforts by news editors to be objective gatekeepers of news content being broadcast. The challenge is maintaining objectivity when framing the news. James Tankard's definition of a media frame is especially helpful in understanding this important responsibility. Found in M. Griffin's seventh edition of A First Look at Communication Theory, Tankard defines a media frame as the central organizing idea for news content that supplies a context and suggests what the issue is through the use of selection, emphasis, exclusion, and elaboration. This practice will be evaluated by analyzing online news coverage of Palestinian statehood by CNN of the United States and by Al Jazeera of Qatar. The analysis will help to better understand the challenges facing the news media of two contrasting regions of the world when it comes to objectivity. According to BBC's online profile of Israel, Israel and the Palestinians have been locked in conflict since Israel's creation in 1948. The result was the displacement of many Palestinians who continue to be displaced by a growing Jewish population. Today, Israel, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, and much of the rest of the world agree that Palestinian statehood is a major step to bringing peace to the Middle East. Such an agreement remains elusive as disagreement continues on issues that include the division of Jerusalem, the state of Palestinian refugees, and the fate of Jewish settlements on Palestinian land. Despite these challenges and opposition from Israel and the United States, in September of this year, the PLO submitted its bid for Palestinian statehood to the United Nations. The U.S. administration has vowed to veto the bid if it passes. The Palestinian bid enjoys widespread world support as evidenced by the vote that admitted Palestine into UNESCO at the end of October of this year. The U.S. argues that an agreement must be reached with Israel first. To understand the news framing of this story by CNN and Al Jazeera, it's a good idea to understand the media environment in the regions from which they're based. For the most part, the news media in the U.S. is independently owned, generally by conglomerates such as Time Warner is for CNN. Editorial decisions are made independent of any government authority and freedom of speech is constitutionally protected. On the other hand, Arab politics and the Arab news media are generally seen as synonymous. State-owned or otherwise regulated news media communicate information that supports the interests of the government. Still, other media news outlets are owned by business interests close to their governments or by family members, especially of royal families, such as the case is with Al Jazeera. Mohammed Alayan, publisher and chairman of an independent newspaper in Jordan, was quoted in Thomas L. McPhail's third edition of Global Communication. He said, I'm competing against countries, not companies. Six questions will help guide this analysis of news framing. How does coverage of Palestinian statehood differ between CNN and Al Jazeera? How much space and importance is given to the Israeli-Palestinian region compared to other areas? What are the main issues being portrayed? Who is being represented? What is missing in the coverage? Does the coverage tend to be balanced or biased? 
An analysis of news framing in the news media will be applied to the subject of Palestinian statehood in the news as covered online by CNN and Al Jazeera. These news channels were chosen because they broadcast their news to a worldwide population and are known for their agenda-setting effect on public policy. The analysis will compare and contrast a selection of 14 news articles, seven from each news outlet, between September and November 2011. News coverage will be evaluated for emphasis and bias based on headlines, story leads, and story content. This includes analyzing news articles for language use, perspectives, and sourcing. It's no secret that leaders in the Middle East have been critical of U.S. news coverage and its bias towards Israel, while the U.S. has claimed Arab news coverage has its own bias towards Muslim extremists. Such negative perceptions of objectivity are indicative of a phenomenon described by Halel Nasek in his study, Our News and Their News, the Role of National Identity in the Coverage of Foreign News. Nasek presents evidence suggesting that matters of national loyalty trump matters of journalistic professionalism. When it comes to reporting the news, applying professional news values takes a back seat when reporters are covering a news event where national interests are at stake. This condition serves as an important reference from which to gauge Arab versus American news coverage. The subject of Palestinian statehood brings to mind certain national interests for those reporting from each side of the news story. They include Israel's security for the U.S. and the Palestinian refugee situation for neighboring Arab countries. Strategically, Israel is the strongest ally the U.S. has in an otherwise skeptical Middle East, while an independent Palestinian state could mean relief for Arab nations who bear the burden of taking in refugees. News coverage of the Israeli-Palestinian region by CNN and Al Jazeera covered more editorial space and made the top headlines more often than other world regions. The coverage reflects the importance this region plays, especially in the Middle East peace process. The analysis of news framing by the two networks on Palestinian statehood revealed the challenging effect outlined by Nasik on the issue of national loyalty versus journalistic professionalism. First, CNN's headlines used framing consistent with the U.S. position on protecting the interests of Israel. Only one headline was neutral. Six of the seven headlines highlighted the negative effects of the Palestinian statehood request. Phrasing used included, tough spot. Coming to a boil, cuts UNESCO funding, freezes UNESCO funds, and bid stalled. One news story associated Palestine with Iran. Al Jazeera framed its headlines consistent with the Arab position of supporting the interests of the Palestinians. The issue was framed in a mostly neutral to positive light. Three of the seven headlines used positive phrasing associated with Palestinian forward progress. Phrasing included rally and support, clears way, and will push. Three headlines were neutral and one was negative with the term condemn used to describe U.S. actions against UNESCO. Next, CNN's story leads were framed similarly to its headlines. Four of the seven story leads highlighted the negative effects of the Palestinian statehood request. They included a stalled peace process, the possibility of vetoing a U.N. resolution, a sharp rebuke from President Obama, and cutting funds to UNESCO. A fifth story lead used an Iranian soccer victory over Palestine to paint the Palestinians as a subordinate to Iran. Two story leads remained neutral in language. Al Jazeera framed its story lead similar to its headlines. Three of the seven story leads highlighted forward progress, positive reactions, and positive results. They included Palestinians' preparation to submit their bid, Palestinians' gathering to show support, and Palestinians' first dip diplomatic victory. Another three story leads remained neutral in language. One story lead was negative, explaining that the U.S. government cut funding to UNESCO. Finally, story content by CNN included two articles that were biased towards the American-Israeli position. One was biased based on the use of a negative connotation in the article theme, and one was biased towards the Palestinian position. Sources used in the seven articles varied between two and eight, with no apparent correlation between the number of sources and bias. The overall content of the seven CNN articles tended to balance out any apparent bias. Story content by Al Jazeera included one article that held a neutral position. Five articles were biased towards the Arab-Palestinian perspective, while one was biased towards the American-Israeli perspective. Sources used in the seven articles varied between two and five. They tended to be supportive of the Arab-Palestinian perspective and included third-party news analysts and Al Jazeera's own reporters. The overall content of the seven Al Jazeera articles was heavily weighted on the Arab-Palestinian perspective. Missing from both news outlets was more coverage of the Arab perspective from neighboring nations. 
CNN's news coverage framed the issue of Palestinian statehood by highlighting the negative consequences associated with its bid. Al Jazeera framed Palestinian statehood by highlighting its forward progress. CNN presented its headlines and story leads with a bias towards American-Israeli interests, while Al Jazeera did so with a bias towards Arab-Palestinian interests. However, an analysis of story content is telling of the nature of news framing. While the more experienced CNN was biased in its framing of headlines, news leads, and story content on individual stories, the composite of the story content from its seven articles balanced out any apparent bias. The relatively new Al Jazeera remained biased in its news framing throughout coverage in its seven articles, using sources that supported the Arab-Palestinian position, including its own journalists. Evaluating the news media through the analysis of news framing helps develop a better understanding of the challenge in presenting news objectively. This analysis is consistent with Nasik's finding that when covering a news event, national loyalty trumps matters of journalistic professionalism. My name is Mark Gonzalez, and thank you for joining me here on Our World is Communications.